There were plenty of people in your district who voted in the Republican primary for Donald Trump. What's your 30 second pitch to them for why this is a bad idea? You just said it's something that you're passionate about. My 30 second pitch is that we are a country based on fundamental values that Donald Trump is fundamentally opposed to. We are not a racist country. We are not a country that just says, the hell with the Constitution. I don't care what it says. You know, unlawful detentions, targeting specific religions or ethics beliefs, uh, not, uh, not following the G Geneva Convention on torture. I mean, these are not American values. And so as frustrated as you might be with the political scene, do not vote for someone who doesn't represent our values. And you know, and, and I'll say something else. When you're in politics, one of, the, one of those sort of like cardinal rules is you never say what I'm about to say. But <laughs> people should read the history of how Germany elected Hitler. Read that history and just try to understand the analogies. And, uh, and I think that's important at this, at this time. I'm not saying that Donald Trump is necessarily Hitler. I'm not saying that. But you ought to understand how an unbelievably educated, advanced society can elect de a demagogue and how bad it can get as a result. That's, that's, that's quite a thing to say. So I want you to elucid, uh, sort of elaborate on that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I'm already in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> you, you've, open, you've opened that door. I want to hear a little bit more about that. Walk, My, walk me through those historical. You know, there was an interesting piece I, I read. It, it, it cited a, a New York Times article from the mid-1930s that was reporting on on, on Hitler in Europe. And it said, you know, he's saying all these racist things, but everybody says he's not really a racist. Right. The article said that the insiders in Berlin say he's not really. Yeah. That's not, that's just the. That's just, you know, that's just what he's saying. He's trying to, you know, get elected or push the debate or whatever. I think we've got to be really concerned when someone, regardless of his statue, stature as a reality TV star or whatever else, says things that are fundamentally opposed to our values and to who we are as Americans. It's dangerous. But just to, just to take it one more step forward, obviously for, for several million reasons, the comparison to Hitler is a pretty inflammatory one. I'm curious if you think that if he were elected president, he would be capable of doing the same kinds of things that Adolf Hitler I don't know him. I don't know that he would. But um, he certainly talked about carpet bombing the Middle East. You know, that's his approach to ISIS. Which, by the way, like, it's just fundamentally, I mean, fundamentally stupid. He obviously has absolutely no idea how to fight terrorism. I mean, he's someone who's never done that. He's never had to put a, his life on the line for the country. But he's absolutely no idea how to fight terrorists without creating more terrorists in the process. So his ideas are, are not only radical, ridiculous, and immoral, they're also really stupid. <laughs> okay. Final question on this, but so just to be clear on the comparison, you're saying given what, <laughs> given what Donald Trump has said. I you, always try to tr prove the communications people wrong. Sorry. And, and they're not, and, and they're not, they won't let me off the hook. Um, given what he's said and your interpretation that he'd be willing to sort of abrogate some of the basic fundamental constitutional values. Interpretation. He said it out. I mean, he just talked about uh, torturing people this past weekend. That he would, yeah, okay. Um, that, you see, that, you see, that you see him potentially, if he were to become president, going down a less than democratic path that could lead to authoritarianism and war? I mean, essentially, his campaign is based on authoritarianism. And, and here's the other thing, is it's not based on substance, right? It's not like he just has some really radical point of view and he's got a lot of, you know, you know, there's a lot of sort of intellectual thinkers who can back it up. And we may sort of intellectually disagree with it, but at least he's got a point of view. No, I mean, his, his position is just based on lies and things like saying, you know, what about our economy? We're going to make our economy great again. We're all going to get rich. And then, you know, and, 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 and you just look at the stuff. There's no substance there. And this is a real problem in our debate. You know, um, back to the budget committee, you know, which is a great place for people who don't know how to do math. But um, <laughs> we're on the budget committee and we're debating about uh, Obamacare. And I, I, one of my friends, a fellow freshman, is Gary Palmer from Alabama. And, and look, he, he's a very conservative Republican. He and I don't agree on, on, on many important issues. But he's a good man. And he's a gentleman. 
and he's someone that I that I fundamentally respect, even though we have important uh, differences and, and differences of opinion on many issues. Well, he gave a two-minute impassioned speech against Obamacare, and he talked about how it's raising costs for small businesses, and you know we ought to have more private sector involvement in in healthcare, and it was a good, thoughtful speech. I, I disagreed with it, but it was a good, thoughtful argument based on facts. The person who spoke after him started her speech by saying, Obamacare raises costs and decreases access to health care. Now, we can have a reasoned debate about the first part. I mean, there are ways in which Obamacare is raising costs. But tens of millions of people now have access to, to health care that didn't prior to Obamacare. So my point is that 50% of her opening statement was a lie. Now, how do you have a debate with someone like that, right? <laughs> And as a, as a politician, as someone who's coming into this with this sort of view that, you know what, I'm not just going to always tote the party line or use the party talking points. I'm just going to try to speak the truth, even when it's things that are tough to hear for people of my own party. It's frightening as someone who's taken that approach to politics, you know, and, and, and had, you know, won an election on that approach here in Massachusetts. It's frightening that, that someone like Donald Trump is doing so well when he just is speaking lies. What does that say to you about the electorate? Well, it's, it says to me that the electorate is, is so frustrated that they're willing to overlook the real substance and just take someone new. I think that's what's going on here. But, it, but it's frightening, and I think that it's um, you know, a, a cause for concern. And it's, it's why I'm, um, every opportunity to get to vote for education spending, I do. <laughs> <laughs>